Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my offer simple snippets, and I'm back with another video tutorial on core Java programming. So in today's video tutorial, we are going to be covering the topic of multi-dimensional arrays in Java. So in the previous video, we discussed in theory and in detail about the concept of what are arrays in Java. And if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist itself, and you can also see a card. And I'll drop the link in the description as well. So quickly open up your Chrome browser because we'll first start off with a little bit of theory and understand the concept. and then we'll jump on to the programming part so make sure you watch this video till the end because we'll cover both theory as well as the programming part and open up your chrome browser and you can see this link you can type it out or i'll share this link in the description so this is the link to our official website that is simplesnippets.tech and you can go under the courses and core java programming to get all the programming tutorials so individual articles are there under the core java programming page and then once you are on this page you can see that this article is all about multi dimensional arrays so let's first start off with a little bit of theory so let me just zoom in a little bit so talking a little bit about theory of multi dimensional arrays so java multi dimensional arrays are basically array of arrays so essentially it is an array inside an array okay so in other words a multi dimensional array is a nested array which is an array within an array so for simplicity purpose we'll consider it two dimensional arrays and of course there can be more than two or three dimensions we can have n number of dimensions however the complexity level increases so let's imagine a 2d array now if you're coming from a c++ background the concept is pretty much the same so in a 2d array you can imagine a matrix which has rows and columns and these are also known as jagged arrays however jagged is a slightly different concept and we'll also talk about that in this tutorial so we'll cover that in the end so make sure you watch this video till the end if you want to know what are jagged arrays as well so it's a type of multi dimensional array now how do we create a multi dimensional array so a multi dimensional array is created by appending one set of square brackets per dimension so here's an example which is given over here so for a single dimension array we were saying int and then opening and closing square bracket and then int array right so here you can see we've added one more pair of that brackets and in the initialization part we say new int and again two set of square brackets opening and closing and then inside those brackets we have the size of those arrays so this is a 2d array and you can see if i'm using three brackets so it's a 3d array and so on and so forth so this was a little bit of theory and there's a program also let's try to understand that program over here then we'll move to the programming part but first we'll try to understand this program over here theoretically and we'll also visualize this program in terms of the memory and how the array works so right now let's let me just go ahead and quickly try to explain this program so in the main function you can see we have the public static void main so at line number 6 you can see we have created our 2d array i am saying int arr and then i am not assigning or declaring any size inside because i am directly initializing it at this line itself and you can see the way i have initialized it is i have first set of opening and closing curly brackets which are the outer ones and then inside that i have again opening and closing curly brackets with three values then opening and closing brackets with three values and opening and closing brackets with three values so this is basically three rows and three columns array so we'll try to visualize that in a minute so the way i am assigning values to the to it is by using two for loops so the reason why i'm using two for loops and nested for loops is because now there are rows and columns as well right so one for loop will take care of the rows and the next for loop will take care of the columns what we'll do is we'll try to dry run this program also so that you understand what's hap what what is happening step by step so this is running from 0 to 3 or 0 to 2 again the inner for loop is also running from 0 to 2 because the indexes start from 0 and since there are three values per row and per column it would run till 2 right and then ju i am just printing those out so i have already assigned those values so the first row is 279 you can see the output 279 then the second row is 361 and 742 So let's try to see what is exactly happening. So I have a theoretical explanation over here. So this is actual structure what is happening behind the scenes for that array. So our array name is arr, right? You can see our program. We have declared arr. Now what is happening is inside that arr we have three elements. Now each of these three elements are individual arrays. Okay. So that that is what is happening. So these blue blocks. So the first block represents the first array that is two seven nine. so you can see this inner bracket so this is one array which is inside a bigger array which is arr right so the first block is pointing towards the or referring to the first array the second block is referring to the second smaller array that is 361 
so this is that second array and the third block is pointing to the inner third array which is 742 so this is how the picture looks behind the scenes because array is an object right in java so the outer array has one more array inside which is referring to the inner array right so that's what is happening by you can see the structure so you can understand what is happening so thus we say that it is an array of arrays or array within an array okay so now let's quickly open up the netbeans id and let's try to run this program and we'll try to dry run this program as well so we'll see how the for loop goes step by step so let me just open the netbeans id i'm just gonna say my project name is multi-dimensional array so quickly open up your netbeans id and i would recommend that you program along with me so that will give you the best practice okay so i have opened up my netbeans id and i've created a project named multi-dimensional array so in the main function i'm directly going to start off with the coding so i'm just going to copy paste the code from the website i would not recommend that you do that i would recommend that you type it out you can pause this video and type it out yourself if you're doing it for the first time so this is our program right let's try to dry run it what is happening so in this for loop or in the set of these two for loops i'm just printing out the output right so let's try to dry run it i'm just going to open up my notepad and we'll just try to dry run this over here what is exactly happening so right now our array is 3 cross 3 array so you can consider it as rows and columns and the first row consists of 2 7 9 the second row consists of 3 6 and 1 and the last row consists of 7 4 and 2 okay so in the for loop what is happening let's say the first for loop starts right we've initialized i equals to 0 so let's dry run it i equals to 0 the condition is i less than 3 so is i less than 3 yes right so the for loop the first for loop will start right so inside the first for loop we have one more for loop which starts from int j equals to 0 so j equals to 0 and j is less than 3 is the condition so the first time the condition is going to be true because j is 0 so what is being printed over here System dot out dot println arr of i and j now for the first time i is 0 right we've seen it i is 0 j is 0 so what is the element at 0 and 0 position so the first element at 0 and 0 position is 2 right so 2 is going to be printed okay now what is going to happen now remember that this is not print ln this is print so it's not going to print on the next line it is going to print just besides the 2 so the output currently so i'm going to write it op op is 2 right now the j value is going to be incremented you can see we have written j plus plus so j becomes 1 now i is still 0 right because we haven't yet reached the outer for loop the inner for loop is executing right now so i is 0 and j is become 1 again condition is checked is j is less than 3 yes it is less than 3 so now system dot out dot print ln arr of i and j i is 0 and j is 1 so j is 1 which means that we are talking about the second column when j is 0 so j represents the column right so j represents 2 3 7 7 6 4 9 1 2 that is the columns so when j is 1 we're talking about the second column so that is the reason why 7 is going to be printed so the output is going to look like 2 which was already printed and then 7 similarly one more time the loop will execute and 9 will be printed when the j becomes 2 right and when j becomes 3 this loop will exit because 3 is not equal to 3 so this condition becomes false so this loop does not execute however this loop comes out and the outer loop now executes for the first time the i value becomes 1 so i becomes 1 and then again this for loop starts to execute that is the inner inner for loop which will start from the beginning so again j will be 0 so j will be 0 now the output will be printing of arr of 1 comma 0 so 1 is representing the row right the i value is representing the row and 1 is the second row and j 0 means the first column and now you can see outside this for so let me just add the brackets so that you don't get confused outside this for we have one system dot out dot print ln which means just that the cursor comes on the new line so the output now will look like 279 and then 3 will be printed and similarly that entire row will be printed and lastly the last row that is 7 4 2 will be printed so this is how the dry run goes and this is how the printing goes step by step so here this was a very small example of a multidimensional array now this was direct initialization of the 2d array right you can individually also assign values so let's say 
you don't want to initially assign any values you want to individually assign it so now you can say new int and you can say 2 cross 2 okay right now i have not assigned any value however i have allocated the memory of 2 cross 2 matrix array so now i can say arr of 0 comma 0 or 0 and 0 would be equal to 5 so this is me individually assigning the values and i can also individually assign the values using the for loops so i can use that same nested for loop just to take an input from user and assign those values right so that's how you can do that so right now i'm not going to do it because it will just consume our time what you can do is you can practice out a little bit of examples and then you will get a good hold of multidimensional arrays basically multidimensional arrays are used in matrix multiplication and in some form of sorting and algorithm calculations wherein there are multiple steps inside steps so in those kind of scenarios arrays are used and you can also have arrays of objects you can also have multidimensional arrays of objects and classes okay so it's not just limited to primitive data types you can create arrays of objects also so this was multidimensional arrays and as i mentioned we'll talk a little bit about jagged array also because jagged array is another type of multidimensional array so let's jump to the website back again to see a little bit of theory so in order to go to that article just go to the core java programming page and under topics you can see in the basics part you can see the last one is jagged array as of today probably there will be more tutorials tomorrow because every day when i make this video i add an article on the website so that i can explain via that website itself so just click on the jagged array part so what exactly is a jagged array so for understanding jagged array you need to have a good idea of arrays and multi-dimension arrays so which we already discussed right now so a jagged array in java is an array of array so it is a multi-dimensional array but it is such that the member arrays can be of different sizes that is we can create a 2d array but with variable number of columns in each row okay so it need not be exact rectangle that is it need not be 3 cross 3 or it, it need not be a perfect square that is 2 cross 2 4 cross 4 something like that it can be a weird structure which we will just see in a minute so these type of arrays are known as jagged arrays and let's see a programming example so here you can see I have declared a 2D array with two rows. Okay, so I'm saying ARR and two set of brackets, which means that it is a 2D array. Now you can see I have assigned the value of the row, which means I want two rows, but I have not assigned the columns. And this is possible. This is totally fine. You won't get a syntax error over here. Now, in order to make this a jagged array, what I'm saying is I'm saying the first array, that is the first row, will hold three integer values, and the second row will hold two integer values so now the shape is not become exact rectangle it becomes a jagged shape and this is how you initialize the array so what i'm doing over here is i'm starting to initialize the array starting from zero value count and then i'm just incrementing the count plus plus and the for loop is running till the array dot length so every array has a property of length which gives the size of array and then i'm again printing out the same jagged array okay it's pretty similar to what we saw in the previous example of multidimensional array. What you can do is you can copy paste this in your NetBeans ID and dry run it step by step like what we did for the previous example. But before doing that, let me just give you a program ex explanation and we'll see how visually the jagged array looks like. So as you can see, we created the jagged array using the new keyword. However, we just created the rows first. So here's that example. So we first said that the 2d array is going to have two rows right but we did not declare the columns now at the line number 12 i'm saying the first array inside the array that is the first row is going to have three elements so this is how the visualization looks like this is our array the first row i said is going to have three elements so these are the three elements now the second row is going to have two elements so that is why the second row arr of one is going to have two elements and this 0 1 2 3 4 is the count that we iterate in the for loop okay so i started off with count zero then i'm iterating the loop or i'm iterating to the jagged array using the two for loops and inside that i'm just assigning arr of i and j is equal to count plus plus okay so arr of zero zero will be zero arr of zero one will be one and then the count value would be incremented every time so that is the reason why when i print the array i get zero one two three four okay so you can quickly co copy paste this entire code in your NetBeans ID. I'm not going to do it right now because it will just consume our time. 
and what you can do is you can open up a notepad and dry run it step by step so you'll understand it better and i would recommend that you do that but more importance is supposed to be given to this visualization because here's how the jagged array looks like now if you compare this with the multi dimensional array which was a symmetric array you could have seen that there was one more element over here however in jagged array we can make it look however you want you can see that the first row will store 3 and the second row will store only 1 or you can see that the first row will store 1 the second row will store 2 something like that so it's not really symmetric it is jagged that's the ba basic definition of jagged array okay so this was about multidimensional arrays and jagged arrays i hope you understood this concept and if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you found this informational please make sure you share it with your friends so that even they understand this concept and that's it for this video guys make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you get notified whenever i upload a new tutorial which is pretty frequent in recent times i've been uploading video almost daily so yeah that's it for this video guys and i'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace